Hello, in this video I will show you how to use the Lucy WebSocket extension. So I created uh, an example application which is a simple echo application. So there is an echo listener on the server side and whatever the client WebSocket sent to it, the echo uh, listener sends back pretty much from the server with some additional information. So let's see how it works. First of all, let me start up Lucy. And let's navigate to the default page. Okay, so I'm going to go into the directory of the WebSocket example. There are a few files here. Uh, index is pretty much an overview of how to use the extension. So it shows the requirement, the installation, and then the usage. In general, the way that it works, you need to create a component that's called the listener component. And that component uh, can have some optional methods, and those methods will act as event handlers whenever the events occur, they'll be fired. Uh, to register the WebSocket, you use a new function that comes with the extension. It's called register WebSocket. You pass the endpoint, and then you pass a component of the type of the listener. Uh, obviously, if you want to maintain a reference to that uh, listener, you can store it in the application scope, uh, which can be useful if you want to track things and to send events from the application. So anyway, if I will right now call uh, the WebSocket example page, I should get an error because I did not install the extension yet. So let's try that. And Sure enough, we got here that error. The error tells us actually that the register WebSocket function is not found. So what I should have done is first of all, go to the admin. In the application page. And because the extension is still in the beta, it will not appear by itself. So what we need to do is actually uh, go to this page, which I will link to. And here you can see the Lucy WebSocket extension. So I will download it. And it's a really small extension. It's only 32 kilobytes. So what we want to do is scroll down here, select choose file, we'll point to that path, and then we will select the extension, the LEX file, and we'll choose upload. Okay, now we can see that the extension is installed. It's under the install section. So now that the extension is installed, if I'll go again to that page, WebSocket example, then the example is now running. And what happened here is that on the left side, you have the echo client, which is a JavaScript uh, script. And then on the right side, you have whatever comes from the server, from the echo server. So when the, the JavaScript starts, when the page loads, it actually sends a message that says hello WebSocket with the time from JavaScript. And then the server replies here, you see, this is replied from Lucy and the version and the application name and the server time. So, 
and now the JavaScript user interface allows you to type more stuff and if you hit enter this goes a round trip so it goes to the server through the WebSocket and it comes back here through the echo so just you can type whatever you want and test it out if you scroll down a little bit you see the code that made this happen so this is again the aforementioned register WebSocket function pointing to an endpoint at slash lucy dash echo and creates a new echo listener now we can see the echo listener cf script code which is just a basic component it implements uh, all of the methods for the event handlers because for the sake of the example i want to show you what is uh, possible um, and what they did here is pretty much on every event i'm adding it to an array in the session scope that's called websocket event so it's kind of like logging it into the session scope um, you can see the different arguments that are available to the event handlers and if you want uh, actually a good tip is if you want to see what is available you can just do a dump uh, as I show you in an example, for example, the color highlighter is not great here on the comment, but you can just dump the arguments to a file and then inspect that file later and see um, what's available with those arguments. Because everything happens asynchron asynchronously, you don't really you cannot just dump it to the request and sit in a response because it happens in a different context and a different thread so if you want to inspect the arguments you need to uh, save them to a file and then inspect the file later um, some tips here the on handshake and on open event handlers they can return a false if you want for example to uh, check for authorization or authentication and if you want to refuse the connection you can just return false or you can throw an ex uh, exception from a uh, on end check uh, that will also kill the the connection request then in on message you get a reference to the websocket java object you get a string of the message itself and you've got uh, a session scope and application scope and again because the listener is running in a different context you don't really have a, you cannot use just session it's it's very similar to the what happens in on session end for example so if you want to write to the session scope you need to use it here you need to use i mean the reference to the argument that is passed here uh, if you return a string from this method, from the on message method, it is returned uh, to the WebSocket client. Uh, otherwise, you can use the Java methods that come with the WebSocket object. And then you have also on close and on error. So, again, this is the uh, listener, in this case, echo listener.cfc. If you scroll down a little bit more, you see the JavaScript code, which is also very basic. I just wanted to make a working example. So we define a variable with the endpoint uh, and a global variable named WS echo. And then we created an object. The reason I did this is so the object is created only when the page is ready, when it's loaded. Uh, there are many different ways to do that you can do it any way you want so uh, when the page is loaded I'm calling the connect uh, function which creates the WebSocket itself so actually if you open the developer tools let me just undock that for a second
then you can see all the messages that went from uh, the event handlers I'm also logging them as you can see here actually I'm calling here a, a method called echo and what that does it's a function really uh, it adds it here and then it also logs it to the console so uh, if you see that then this message is returned here it's added here and then also you can see it in the console if you want to inspect it and because uh, the WS echo is a global variable to the page you can actually send a message from here and you can see it here um, this is pretty much it and I think I added here was as I mentioned I'm logging the messages to the session so you can see that everything here uh, all those messages were logged here just added to the array and actually another thing I added here was um, adding them to the application scope where they also contain the CFID of the client that sent it so if for example we open this from a different client then then you can see that um, they have the respective CFIDs so this is the one for um, Firefox which you can see here and this is the one from Chrome so anyway that's about it I will uh, try to post as much documentation as I can I'm not sure how much time I'll have for that but uh, I hope you'll find this useful